Hello again. Right, installing the hinges on a door. And I'll be using this door, which is um, one of the doors in the workshop room of my large canal house I'm working on. And um, this room isn't finished as, at all, as you can see. But I have made two doors and um, I'll be installing the hinges on this one today. Because the door I was working on in my, in my previous video, the one for the, ba uh, the bedroom, um, that one isn't finished yet. I'm still painting it and the paint has to dry. So um, I would like to wait with that one. So I'm using this one. And the door frame can be taken out, which is not the case in my bedroom. So this is much easier for me to show you how to do it. Now it's a good idea to look at the real thing before installing hinges on your miniature door. Um, just to see which way you have to install your hinge, because as you can see, the hinge always is installed in a certain way because otherwise you can't open the door. And um, let's look at the hinge. These metal plates are the plates that go into the door jam and into the door and they are called leaf or leaves. And then connected to that is are these cylindrical bits and they are called the knuckles, like the knuckles on your hand. And then these are held together with a pin, which goes inside the knuckles. Now let's look on the other side of my old workshop door, where we can see the knuckles. And as you can see, mine are sticking out a little bit because my door is an old door and it's thinner than my door jamb. But in principle, the leaf can be installed entirely on the inside of the door, as long as the knuckles are on the outside so they can move freely to open and close the door. Now, what do we need? We'll need a door, of course, and a door frame. And then we'll need hinges. And I'll talk about the size of the hinges in a minute. Then we'll need some super glue, um, drills and drill bits. And they, the drill bits relate to the size of the nails you're going to use and I like to use these hand drills which have this sliding action or this one has a spring in it which is also working very well. I prefer that one. And then we need um, a scalpel or a hobby, sharp hobby knife, a pencil and we'll need tweezers. And I like these with the curve and the flat side. And I'll tell you why I like to use these uh, later on in the video. And lastly, we'll need a ruler or calipers. Most regular size internal doors have three hinges. So unless your door is very tall or heavy, or if it's an outside, door you may need more hinges than three but I'm just going for three and I have this packet which I just bought um, in a regular doll's house store and these hinges are about eight millimeters long and uh, compared to my real door and my real hinges that is a perfect 12 scale for hinges so I'm using these What you do have to look at is the width of the leaf because that has to correspond with the thickness of the door because that leaf has to be installed on your door and um, the knuckles will be slightly outside the door frame because otherwise it will interfere with the door opening. So. Um, this fits on there. So this one is good for this door. 
and otherwise you'll have to look for other size hinges and I cannot tell you which ones to buy because that all depends on the thickness of your door. So if your door is four millimeters wide like this one then your leaf needs to be four millimeters or less to fit onto your door. And when you buy the hinges, they often give you the total width of the hinge. So that's both leaves and the knuckles. And in this case, mine is about eight, eight millimeters, a little more than eight millimeters wide, uh, which means because you still have the knuckles in between, this one will fit my door, which we've just seen. So <laughs> that's no surprise there. Now the hinges often come with pins or nails and um, these do, not always though, so you have to be aware of that. And these have pins with them or nails with them, but I find them uh, a little bit short. So I have some, they're nice ones though, because they have like a gripping action. That's good. Um, but I find them a little bit short, so I've got these, and these are one eighth uh, of an inch brass uh, brass brands. Um, so they're a little bit longer. An eighth of an inch is what three point two millimeters, I believe. So I'll be using these because they're just slightly longer. And um, your drill bit has to correspond with the thickness of your nails. So that will, you have to measure that and that, that's easily done with your uh, calipers. So I'm measuring the thickness of the nail and it is over here, 0.5 millimeters right there. So the thickness of the drill is also going to be 0.5 millimeters. And you can dry, drill a test hole to see if the nail fits in or if it's too, the hole is too wide and it doesn't have any grip. So you can adjust it. Okay, let's get this all out of the way and start with the hinges. Now, the first thing we have to do is determine where the hinges are going to be and on which side of the door. Um, now, in my case, the doors are the same on both sides, so it doesn't matter. Um, and I would like to have the doorknob, uh, well, I would prefer to be here. And I've measured my own doors and all of the doorknobs are at about 100 centimeters to 103 centimeters high, which is about 39.4 inches, which is about eight and a half centimeters or in inches, that would be around 3.4 inches. So I'm going to measure that, um, so eight and a half. So the door handle should be around here. Um, and then the hinges. Now I like to place them here at the top. Um, just below or just at the same level as the the highest um, door panel. So here. And then go down. And the bottom one, the same thing. So right, right here and then go up. And the hinge, the middle hinge um, well, the strongest part of the door, in this case, in, in here in the center, is of course where the middle rail is. Um, so I'm going to place it right 
here and then go down. And you don't have to, you can do it higher. I just, you know, I think it looks better. So now we know where we want the hinges to be. And we, I'm going to transfer those lines to the side of the door. Now I'm going to take my hinges and I've put them into a little um, container so I don't lose them. And, um, oh, they're a bit stiff, so I have to move them a little bit. So here you can see those miniature hinges, um, the barrel, or not the barrel, the uh, knuckles, sorry, um, They don't, uh, you would think that this is the outside of the hinge, but it's not, it's the, it's the scent, it's the middle of the hinge because it closes that way. So the knuckles on the outside um, don't look as, as similar to the real ones as the ones on the inside. But um, it's a little uh, counterintuitive, I think. But anyway, so it opens that way closes this way and we have to figure out which way we want the door to turn now in my case this is the door frame and I want to open the door to open and close this way so the hinge if I can show you will have to be attached in this way because that's how it closes and that's how it opens so they're going to be if this is the let's say the front at of the door I hope I can get that off again and this is the back. So the, the front opens like that. Then the hinge has to be on that side. And the knuckles have to be on the back. I'm calling it the back and the front, but um, that's not what they are, of course. But just to make it clear. So, I have to have the hinge here, so the knuckle will be, knuckles will be on the back, so this is the place the hinge will be, so now I have to, and I, I, could, I could just measure it with um, my calipers, but you know, you can do it this way as well. Which, oh, wobbly, which is hard when you're trying to film it because of, I'm sitting at a slightly odd angle. Um, so let me just do that off camera. I'll just make a little mark so you can see it. It goes up to there. And also, the leaf, as I said, the knuckles are staying outside of the door. They're not on the thickness of the door, so they stay just slightly outside. That means the leaf has a little bit of room left here on the front. You see that? It doesn't quite go all the way to the front of the door. It just has a little little bit left, which is really nice. It's, it's not necessary, but it just looks very nice because then you won't be able to see the hinge from the front, which on my real doors, it's done the same way. So there's a tiny 
bit of oh, oh that's really messy <laughs> a tiny bit of um bit of the door left where you don't cut into so the the leaf sits slightly proud of the front edge of the door like that but i'll show you i'll just do this measure those off camera because this is really messy <laughs> and um, then we'll continue with the next step and i wasn't happy with the placement of the top hinge after all so i decided to move it up a little bit and um, actually an easy way to draw your hinges or the leaf of your hinges is to turn it round and um, place the barrel on the back like that against the door well I say easy but it's so fiddly to hold on to and then just draw around it so I'm, I'm going to put it a little bit higher right there And the other side as well. That's tricky. <laughs> I need more hands. There. So now you know <clears throat> that the hinge should fit in there and the barrel will stay on the outside. So I've drawn all three boxes for where the hinges will go and now you take your scalpel or your very sharp hobby knife and you start to score and stay on the inside of the lines because you can always make it bigger but you can't once you've taken away something you cannot add to it again well but we all know that so um, I just start to score lines and um, it's a little bit you have to be a little bit careful and once you've scored a line or several lines you can sort of go in at an angle and cut away and be careful because your knife can slide and you should always cut away from yourself but um <laughs> and take away some of the wood you just keep going and I also stayed away from the top line actually you should score that as well and again just score it a little bit on the inside and I always like to go stop at the corner and turn it round and then Put my knife in at a corner again and go down. And as I said, you can always clean it up later and make it bigger, but you cannot make it smaller. So just stay on the inside a little bit. And ideally, you should do this um, to the depth of your leaf or the, the leaf of your um, hinge, which is a little bit difficult to determine, but you can always, you know, make it deeper. And you could do this with your milling machine. Um, but to set that up, I just, I don't know. I just think it's easier to do it this way. And be very careful at the edges. Now let's see if it fits. Mm. 
and it almost fits because you can keep in mind that your pencil also has a thickness. So if you're drawing a lot around your hinge, that pencil line also includes the thickness of your pencil lead. So um, that's another reason to always stay on the inside of the line and make it slightly smaller in the beginning. Now that's not going to fit in. Plus it's not deep enough. I can feel that with my finger. So I'm going to go do another pass and until it fits. And I make these cuts because not only does it look nice, uh, uh, but it makes it easier for me to remove all the wood and um, the cut down like that makes the blade stop when you cut something away and it won't go all the way through at least well it will if you apply a lot of pressure but um, it helps to stop so it's like a stop cut as well now i've sped up this part of the video because in reality the cutting of these mortises or rebates for the hinges took me about 15 minutes so take your time, stay in control of your knife and whatever you do, be very careful and mindful of your fingers because if your knife slips, um, it can hurt you. And if you have a tiny chisel, that would be an even better tool to use for this job. Okay, these are finished. Um, I've checked that my hinges fit in there and they do. Um, this last one is a little bit too deep, but um, it's all right. I can manage. And uh, the next step is to um, get the pins in there. But before we do that, and here are the pins I'm going to use. Just put some in this. And I'll show you um, what I mean. In some cases, if you put the pins in there in the holes and then the door closes or the hinge closes the nails or the pins will touch each other and um, that means that sometimes your hinge won't close all the way because of the roundness of the nail head and uh, that's why I always sand down my nail heads I sand them flat and here's how you do that just take a pin and like I said, this is why I like these tweezers, because I can hold the pin like that and just sand it like that. So I've got my pin here. There we go. And it's flat. Maybe you do a little a few times more. Um, that's all there's to it. Now the other thing I like to do is on my hinge, the part the part that um, is glued to the door and then in, also uh, nailed onto the door, but glued first, I like to rough it up a little bit or um, I use my scalpel and uh, scratch the surface of the hinge or the, the side that's being glued down. I just think that gives the glue a better key to grab onto. And um, I suppose you could do it with some sandpaper. I just always use my scalpel for that. That's just to give the glue a little bit of a key to grab onto. And next, I take a little bit of super glue. On there. That's too much. But, <laughs> and my door. 
and my cleaned hinge and I just um, make sure I know which way around to put it so it closes that way so it goes in like that I put a little bit of super glue and stay away from the knuckles because if you glue the knuckles together then your door won't um, close anymore. So don't come too close to the knuckles with your super glue. And the super glue is just there to hold them in position basically. And then glue it in onto your door and try to keep the hinge straight which is also a good thing and just push it down really good make sure your hinge is still working so you, your super glue is not seeping onto the hinge part and just hold it down for a second so that the glue can attach. And then do the next one, same thing. I've cleaned the hinge where the hinge leaves. I know which way around I'm going to put it, put on a little bit of super glue. Avoid the, the knuckles and glue it onto your door, keeping it straight. Make sure your hinge is still hinging. Push it down. And the next one. And while that's drying, um, we can continue with the nails. Oh, <laughs> and um, I've got my drill here. And what I like to do to make sure I've got the correct size drill bit is just drill a hole in a bit of scrap wood and then take my where's my tweezers here <laughs> take my one of my um, nails that I'm going to use which I actually did file down and put it in there to see how it fits and that fits fine and that's important and it shouldn't be too wide or too narrow because we're going to dip the nail that we're going to put into the hole in super glue and if you're if your hole um, if it's too narrow then you have to apply a lot of pressure to get that in there and with the super glue on there um, it might grab the wood very quickly and you won't be able to uh, get it in there without a lot of um, pressure and that might actually rip off your hinge. So just make sure that the hole has the right size, which it does in my case. So now we have to drill holes and that's why it's nice that the hinges are glued down because that now they won't move anymore. So just just take your drill and uh, position it over where the hole is, and drill a hole. And it's not too hard. The only thing that's quite hard is to keep the hold the drill and uh, hold the door at the same time. And you don't have to drill too deep because. Actually, that was too deep already. <sighs> Doesn't matter. Uh, 
Um, so I've got my fresh, I put a little bit of fresh uh, super glue on there. Then I get my nail ready to go. So it goes in there like that. Dip it in a little bit of super glue, just the end. Position it and then I just push it down with the back of my tweezers. So one more time, I take my nail and I have sanded down the head of the nail so it's flat. And then I dip the nail, the end of the nail into the super glue. I position it over the drilled hole. And then with the back of my tweezers, I push it down into the hole. And that's it. And I do that with all the nail holes and the nails. Well, that's finished. All the holes are drilled and the nails are attached. So the hinges are attached to the door now. And now we have to attach the door to the door frame. And I know which um, way I would like the door to be. So it's going to be, the hinges are going to be on this side because my door is going to open that way. Um, and because I have the hinges in there and I need to cut mortises here, the door is not going to fit in there now. It's too big with the hinges on there. So what I do, I open up the hinges and I place the door on the door frame. And remember, the knuckles will have to stay on the outside of the door jamb as well, because you want the door to be able to turn, uh, to, um, to open. And if you place them on the inside, too far on the inside, you'll have a problem opening. It's not going to be easy. So just hold that there. And then just draw a little line where the hinges are positioned on the door jam. So we know where they have to go, where the mortises will have to go. So that's where I want them. And then just as I did on the door, I transfer the lines to the inside of the door frame like that because that's where I want the mortises to go so that's where they're going to be now the other thing I need to know is how because I know now I know this size the length and now I have to know the width of the blade as well and I just measure that I use my calipers again just measure the width of that blade and um, if you set your calipers uh, I've measured that then um, this measurement and that measurement and the one on the back they're all the same and um, for this, I'm going to use the tool on the back. And you can just place that and use that for marking the width of the mortise. Like that. And there we have the size of the leaf 
and this, these will be the mortises. And then I do the same thing I did with the door. I make cuts inside the line. So again, same as the door, stay inside the line. And this is just a job. Uh, you'll have to concentrate and uh, go slowly and do the same thing we did on the doors. I finished cutting the mortises and now I'll check whether the hinges fit in there. They should fit. And they do, of course. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected anything else. But um, the other test you can do uh, to see if they're actually deep enough is to just put your door in there. Because if you didn't cut them deep enough, then you don't have enough room for the hinge to go in and then your door, door won't fit into the door frame. It's that easy. But mine are deep enough, they fit, and um, they are in the right position. So now I can um, do the same thing I did on the door, glue the hinges in the mortises, and then uh, let it dry, and then drill holes. Now drilling holes in here is going to be tricky, because, um, where's my drill? I'll take that with the drill because I don't have enough room for my drill. So I'm probably going to go into uh, into the door frame on uh, a slight angle, but you only need tiny bits, uh, tiny holes. I mean, not tiny bits, tiny holes, not very deep holes. So um, it will be okay. And here I'm scratching the surface of the hinges again, so the glue has a better grip. And then putting some super glue on the hinges and gluing them into the mortises. And here you can see them from the side. And then I'm drilling all the holes, which is also hard to see. But um, it's hard to do because I have to do it at a slight angle. I've drilled the holes already, but I forgot to, to say that um, after you've glued the hinges into the mortises, then you really ought to check whether the door is in the correct position. And um, mine is, it's a little bit tight. So I have to push it down a little, a little bit further so the hinges aren't glued in all the way. But, um, uh, yeah, you can still correct it at this time and um, it will be harder to correct the door when it's uh, all, you know, when all the pins are in place. So do that first. And here I'm sanding the heads of the pins again. I'm sanding them flat, then dipping them into the super glue and gluing them into the holes. And I'm sorry, I didn't realize that um, you couldn't see that on camera, but that's what I'm doing. And it's the same thing I was doing uh, on the doors earlier in the video. Well, it's finished. Everything is glued in, the nails are in, and the door fits into the door frame and it closes. And um, so I'm happy with that. And now it's time to finish off the door, to finish the door with a door handle. And you could have done that before, but I like to be able to keep everything flat. And when you have a door handle in there, you cannot do that. So um, door handle. And the other thing I would like to do is make, um, I don't know what that's called. And here you can see it on my real door, this part. Um, this is also what makes the door stop. When you close the door, that's what it closes against. And um, so I'll be adding that. I won't be doing that in this video and it's up to you. You can do that or not. That's that's whatever you like to do. And I will also be adding a frame around here when the 
door is installed in its final position in the room box. So um, I would like to say good luck with this. Uh, I'm laughing, but um, uh, it is not easy. I will tell you, you there are many. There will be many of you that will be frustrated. You'll lose your pins. Um, hinges will come off. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy. Um, try to keep them straight. That's the main thing. Try to keep the depth, everything at the right depth and the right uh, position. Um, and yeah, practice, practice, practice. And the other thing is just take a nice cup of tea of, or coffee or whatever you like to drink and go slowly. So that's it for today. Um, good luck with it. And uh, I'll see you next time. Until next time.